Welcome to Paria Magazine, where I chat with individuals who have a desire to create. Today, I am joined by the host of the Theatre Thoughts podcast. Welcome to Paria Magazine, Justin Clark. Hey, how are you? Good, thank you. So, uh, yeah, like I mentioned, you're the creator of the Theatre Thoughts podcast. For sort of people that may not have heard of that before, what is that all about? So the Theatre Thoughts podcast focuses on um, introducing a range of creative talents and artists um, across the theatre industry, ranging from the professional theatre scene to the independent theatre scene. Um, We cover a whole range of discussions ranging from independent playwrights to big name musicals like Six and Fangirls. Um, We talk to playwrights, directors, actors, and I've recently started trying to do a new um, sort of structure that's uh, the Theatre Thoughts co-hosts, because it's normally just me talking. And I thought, like, I want more, like, kind of diverse um, voices on. So I'm I'm trying to open up to people that don't need, like, an entire, like, half an hour, 40 minutes or whatever, um, but just want to do, like, a quick plug, but also want to, like, get into the habit of um, meeting other people and new creatives. So... Um, trying to build the podcast further in terms of voices and uh, meeting the demands, I suppose, because it's kind of exploded recently, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. So then outside of the podcast, uh, who is Justin away from being deep in the theatre scene? Uh, (laughs) Yeah. really deep question um I guess well um in my day job in my money job of my my money job um I'm a teacher um but uh it's been a long journey for me uh in terms of where I've got in my life I I did performing arts at um at uni I did a three-year performing arts degree um majoring in performance making and uh and then I did a teaching degree on top because I came to the end of my degree and I went oh, there's not like a great deal of money in performing. I kind of got a little (laughs) bit scared. So then I tagged on a teaching degree and I was like, English drama teacher, that'd be be great. That'd be crazy. And then I went overseas to teach, actually. I didn't teach in Australia for very long. I taught in the UK for three years. um, And every weekend I got, I just went straight to the West End and I bought a ticket at one of the cheap ticks um, stands and went to see as many shows as I could within those three years. It was an immense amount. Um, and I was involved with a local theater, um, group there, um, who really like took me in, um, and brought, gave me like a theater family, which was really nice. Um, and then from there, I went over to the U S and I did uh, a summer camp, uh, with camp Tommy, uh, part of the fresh air fund. It was a drama teacher over there. And then I came back to Australia, did a bit of casual teaching, started working with theater people, um, in a feature article reviewer aspect. And that's where I kind of got into the, um, kind of writing and reviewing side of theater. Cause I always wanted to do it. I always thought that'd be a great job. That'd be awesome. Um, but then after that, I, <laughs> I changed degrees again. I went to work with Top Deck Australia um, and I went over to Europe and just was a tour guide for an entire year, came back, worked with Flight Centre um, on like my downtime and then COVID hit. So that all went down the drain mm-hmm. very, very quickly. Um, and when I was back working with Flight Centre, I really developed Theatre Thoughts, which was my own um, reviewing and feature article site on um, on theatre in Australia, particularly Sydney. And that just took off like uh, very, very slowly um, before the pandemic. And then obviously the pandemic shut down. So that was, you know, shut down for a, a long time. And then towards um, the end of 2021, that's when it started picking up again and people started coming to me directly for like um, to share media releases and resources. And um, and then I kind of stayed with teaching because I was like, that's a stable job. That, that's not going away anytime soon. So I went to that and, um, and then started this theatre thoughts journey, which has just been massive. It's, it's taken off. Bits of little bits and pieces from all over the place, obviously, has helped with ideas and structuring and things like that. When you yeah. go further back, though, where did the whole passion for theatre begin? Was it purely when you were able to go to all of those shows no no I was performing um way back when I was young my mum bought me in drama um club after school and I did you know the whole like after school drama and the little performances and and I, I did drama in high school um I was like the only boy in uh, year 11 and 12 
to do drama. Um, it was me and like eight other girls and it was, yeah, it was just really good. My teacher really built like a good passion for me um, for drama. One of my other English teachers built a passion for me for Shakespeare. And so I started like studying more Shakespeare when I see a lot of Bell Shakespeare Company um, productions and it kind of just developed from there. I went, uh, I, I tried to, I, when I was younger, I tried to make it as like an actor. Um, and I did a couple of TV commercials, audition for a couple of films, um, but that never like quite took off. So I did the performing arts route in uni and that just kind of built the professional side of the industry outside of, you know, me just thinking of um, acting in terms of a TV screen movie aspect, but now mm. branching into theater, which is in my, in my opinion, Theater is better because it's live and you feed off the audience's reactions. Um, and I just love the experience of going to a live theater show. It's just anything can happen and I love it. And you get, yeah, you get that instant feedback. So, you know, if you're improving skill wise or not, I guess. Yeah. Especially when you're doing comedy comedies. Uh, I love comedy. Um, I'm, I'm not particularly like too funny myself, but I love to watch comedy shows because you can tell as a performer, you can tell like when, you know, something falls flat with an audience or when it doesn't, um, and it, how a theater resonates very differently with different people. And then obviously if you had that sort of acting experience and sort of going down that path, how did you find the transition to then shift more towards the media side of covering Australian theatre? Um, it's interesting because it's kind of always been in me um, that I, I wanted to go and see shows and talk about them and share my opinions on them. Um, I, I never really thought of myself as an opinionated person, but I must be um, <laughs> because it's come from here. Uh, when I was living in the UK, um, I, I started um, this what the like kind of pre-original theater thoughts I suppose was um just me going to these shows and writing what I thought about them for my friends back in Australia um and it kind of just kept developing from there and I think being an English teacher in the UK it really helped my writing ability um so it was kind of like a weird pairing of sorts and then um, when I worked with theatre people, the first job they put me on was to go and cover um, Hugh Jackman announcing his uh, tour in Australia. So I got to like go to the um, Contemporary Museum in Sydney in uh, Circular Quay and go just hear Hugh Jackman talk about the show he's doing. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I could do this. I could do this. This, is, this is, sounds pretty good. This seems like a good idea. Yeah, yeah. And it kind of just developed from there, really. Um, and as like Theatre Thoughts has built and, and developed further and um, publicists are coming to me and asking to come on the podcast and, and for my reviewing team to go and see their shows, it's shown me how um, important that sort of media base um, is in the theatre scene in Australia, especially during, well, um, after COVID and how people have been very reluctant to come back to theatres um, probably over the past year or so. And so being an integral part of making that happen brings a certain amount of joy to me um, that I really relish. Yeah, I guess you get a, a level of that fulfilment that you would get if you were on the stage, but you just get it in a slightly different way now. Yeah, exactly. And then on the podcast, I get to talk to so many different artists. Like we talked to um, Eve Blake the other day. We talked to Vidya Makan and Carla Gare from Six and all these amazing creators who I'm um, just like, oh, I'm in awe of these people. So it's really, it's quite special. And you spoke about the, the COVID situation. How difficult was it to maintain theatre thoughts during that time? Um, it, it was difficult because it really was a lot of media releases coming through that was this show's postponed, this show's postponed. And it was just a lot of that. that. So I guess during the, the main lockdown in Sydney, it was pretty much non-existent because I was like, there's not much going on. Um, I know other people who started their podcast during lockdown um, as a way to continue that. But I think I was so focused on my other job that, that thought didn't come to me. And then it was, it wasn't really until the end of 2021 that I went, okay, lockdown's lifting. I want to rejuvenate theater thoughts. So I did 
um, a new logo. I did a new website. And then I was like, I need something that makes me stand out. And I was from the other reviewers because like Aussie theatre, um, theatre people who are now Theatre Matters and then Stage Whispers, they're like, you know, big contenders. And then obviously you have Broadway World um, and a lot of others. So I was like, I need me that I need something for me that that's an add on that's different. And I was like, podcast, chuck it on there. Let's go. Um, and did my research into podcasting. Um, and now this whole world of podcasting has opened up, which I'm sure like you know about. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's a whole new thing in itself. So it's like, um, I, I don't, I don't really rest. I just keep building and building. Yep. I feel like we had a very similar experience during, during the lockdown where kind of our whole passion just disappeared. So we had mm. to find different ways. So yeah, I built the, the commentary booth podcast during that time. I totally revamped the magazine during that time. So we did very similar things just to maintain yeah. and continue going with our, our little projects and passions. Yeah, exactly. You got to find ways to adapt. And you mentioned how the theater thoughts has grown since you sort of first started out. Did it start out as just like, a one man show doing everything. And now you have a little small team of people working with you. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. It was literally, it started off as a WordPress blog, just with me, just doing like the designs on there and just saying, Oh, this is what I think. Um, and then I met my editor, Charlotte, Charlotte Smee's a, a friend of a friend, um, of mine. Uh, we went to see fangirls once in 20, um, it would have been 2021, well, early 2021, actually. Um, and, and they, and my friends mentioned that she also like is a great writer, loves theater. And I was like, oh, actually I've got a lot of stuff coming in now that I can't do. So would you like, maybe want to come on the team? And then she's just been an immensely, um, like integral part of the team. Now she edits all the reviews that come through. I do some as well, where she can't like kind of manage all of them. We've got roughly nine or so reviewers in Sydney. Um, we've got a team of six people now in Melbourne um, who are so eager and so keen. And Melbourne's a great addition to the site because it is, you know, rivaling Sydney. If if not, it probably is a little bit like more. I don't like to say that because I'm a Sydney person, but mm -hmm. like it is a little bit more integral in terms of the theatre industry in Australia. Um, so having a team there is just essential. And that was a massive thing that I wanted and Charlotte helped make that happen. So I'm really indebted to her with how theater thoughts has grown beyond just me doing my own thing. Like I do a massive amount of it still, but it's just evolved into a, a small team, which is awesome. Yeah. That Melbourne group must be super important. Like, like we've seen recently, a lot of shows doing just Melbourne legs, like they're not doing Melbourne and then coming to Sydney for a season, they're just doing exclusively Melbourne or exclusively Sydney. So you definitely yeah, need to yeah. expand out there. Yeah, definitely. And that's something I got, which is awesome. And they're also just very hungry, um, which is, which is great, which is what I want. What is the ultimate dream with theater thoughts? The ultimate dream. Um, I want to be, I want theater thoughts to be like, I keep saying, I keep quoting to myself whenever I kind of get downtrodden, I go, no, no, I'm building an empire here. I'm building a machine. <laughs> I, I want to be essentially the the person that people go to when they say we need someone to promote this show and reach many people up, oh, we'll get Justin on, we'll get Justin's team. And I want to be up there with the Aussie theaters and the stage whispers. You know, I want to be part of the, the big dogs, I suppose. And, um, and be one of the, uh, it, this sounds cocky. I know this sounds cocky, but I, I want to, I want influence <laughs> essentially. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to uh, be someone that people can rely on and, and go, Justin's team will help us to do this. And I want to be that reliant voice for theater, both professionally, as well as the independents and the small people, um, to be able to reach the masses. Okay. Awesome. And then in terms of the theater shows you have seen recently, do you have a favorite that you would highly recommend to people? Ooh, there's a couple of really, really good ones on at the moment. Um, I love Six. I love it a lot. Like it's, it's just a really, really powerfully um, 
poignant and just fun show. It's in Melbourne currently. So, I mean, it's, it's left Sydney, but if anyone's in Melbourne, like definitely go and see it. Um, in terms of independent theatre, there's a range of like little companies that do stuff, but um, King's Cross Theatre constantly pump out really high quality shows as well as Griffin Theatre. They pump out a lot of quality shows. Actually, no, not just them, Belvoir as well. Sorry, there's so many in Sydney yep. to just pick one. But like there's a there's really good theaters in Sydney that pump out high quality shows constantly. Um, and I think they're the ones that I'm slowly diverging towards. Like I love it, like going to see the Jacob Little Pills and the Moulin Rouges, which by the way is incredible. Um, I'll, to answer your question, I'd probably say that one. Um, but uh, I, I'm really diverging towards going to see a lot of the smaller shows because they're such good quality and um, I feel like more people need to see them. Yep. Did you get a chance to see the Dubbo Championship Wrestling Show? I did. I did. It was so good. I'd never thought of like integrating wrestling into a musical. Um, and the Hayes Theatre is my favourite theatre in, and I, I, will, I will say it because it is my favourite theatre in Sydney. I love all the shows they do. I think they're amazingly um, just genius in how they integrate these big, large, what, what are supposed to be big, large musicals into such a small, intimate space. And they knock it out of the park constantly. Mm -hmm. I'll be interested to see how King's Cross Theatre does now when they move to their their new venue as well that should be an interesting change for them yeah we're going to see their last show there i think next week um which will be great and kind of thing to be able to say we saw the last show before they moved and then i'm pretty sure we're going to see their new one on broadway um and i think whoever managed to get a theater on broadway is like <laughs> very very clever because that is a great marketing idea to say um kxt on broadway is just it's perfect yep yeah so that uh, when i got the press release saying that they were moving to broadway i was like that's a great headline in that press release yeah it's perfect so whoever got that i think they need to pay rise uh yeah all right i think that's kind of everything sounds like it's a fantastic little resource for people to check out what's hot and new coming up yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and they can follow us uh, on Instagram. Um, it's at Theatre Thoughts AUS. Um, I sometimes on the podcast go Theatre Thoughts Oz and I go, oh no, they'll think it's like OZ. Um, no, it's AUS. Um, we're currently redeveloping our website, so it's not being regularly updated, but it will be soon. All right. Well, we can always go back and update when the, the link goes live, but yeah, we'll definitely yeah. link all the social medias and uh, thank you for coming on the show and good luck with the, the website and the podcast moving forward no worries thanks so much for having me um i think yeah I, it's um, been a real privilege thank you <laughs>